and there is some actually solid research on the whorl patterns in horses and in cattle actually that shows um, coping mechanisms, like how well they cope with different things. So if you have a really high whirl, it m means that you actually have a less um, adapted coping mechanism. So perhaps you get more stressed easily and are more sensitive, which can work out really well for some of us. Like we like those and that works really well for us because we don't, I don't like to push horses and I don't like them to do things that, you know, I might have to push them through things. Uh, whereas the horses with the really low whirls are supposed to be less sensitive and more just comfortable with whatever happens next. The thoroughbred people look at swirls a lot when they're buying a horse. Yeah, and the way his are, ooh. <laughs> personality, personality, personality. So he's got swirl, he's got swirl, they're both pretty much between his eyes, which is nice, because that kind of, that balance is their level-headedness. But his are offset, so it shows that when they have a double swirl, it means they're more complicated than just a single straight swirl between the eyes. So he's got double swirl, and not only a double swirl, but offset double swirl. So they're not stacked in the middle or across in the middle. So his swirls mean that, one, he might be more intelligent than the average Joe Blow, or he might be a little more complicated. He might have a little bit more opinions than <laughs> you want to go with sometimes. With yeah, he might be a little bit opinionated. You can have the best horse in the world and then all of a sudden you send it to somebody and then six months later you got a problem horse. And I like having a little ground, ground school test to check where they are mentally and emotionally before I'd get on. I think uh, with doing a lot of what I do, I do get that connection when I go out to catch him that I have an idea what, what it's going to be like. If you have to go out and catch your horse or is your horse going out to catch you, that, that'll tell you a lot right there what your day is going to be like. Like Porsche's the, the horse that when I go outside, she's meeting me at the gate. You know, and it's always a nice ride with Porsche here, but maybe Luke might be not so apt for me to catch him. So maybe we might want to work on that first before we go on anything else. Just I think a horse, when he, when he wants to do something, he'll tag that object. Like when you load a horse into a trailer, first thing they want to do is tag down that floor and what that person does is grab and go, hey, 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 and you just ruined it. Like giving that horse that chance to get curious about something. So I think that habit, like when you go out to catch him, does he tag you? When you go to load him in that trailer, is he trying to tag that trailer to say, I accept that? Even for ourselves, becoming really aware of our own body language was really important. And it still is because we all create habits, whether we know it or not, we have habits, whether we like them or don't like them. So the ones that we're not aware of or we don't like, those are the ones we have to be conscious of because that means something. Um, I think a really good one is when we play, when we ask them to draw at liberty, in the beginning, we misunderstood that by leaning forward, we thought we were drawing into them, whereas our movement of leaning forward was putting pressure on them. And what in fact we had to do was reverse our own habits and our own body language to say, come to me by standing more upright and bringing our posture up. And that would tell the horse that we want them to come to us. When I get two eyes, two ears, I should be able to pop up just like this and with a stick, we swing backwards, the string backwards this way, because that means something. And that eventually will signal to him that I want him to come to me. Whereas if I go this way, if I pop up and I get my, his attention by coming up and lean forward and swing the rope towards him, that's telling him to go away. And I think a lot of people aren't aware, yeah. aware of their own body language. Yeah. Yeah. They say, say, come this way and their whole body's going one way and their hands yanking them the other direction yeah. or they're asking them to go on a turn they're asking them to turn but their their body weights the wrong side and yeah. and I think problems arise because you didn't address them in s slower like Jordan says going back to on the ground um, I think if a horse is rammy or they're dropping their shoulder is a big one. If your horse is dropping a shoulder, it will drop the shoulder at the end of your line 
at a walk or a trot or a canter on a circle on the ground. It will drop the shoulder right there and you can fix it on the ground right there and I guarantee it, it will fix it under saddle. And I think if a horse is rammy under saddle, you can, you can address that on the ground. So I think once you start adding more speed and more stress by going to a different arena or having more people around and horses, it's a lot in that environment. So as soon as you start adding all of that, um, it amplifies the little things that may need to be addressed. So what this is, is just creating um, a soft feel in the horse. And you want, you're wanting them to, to give to you lightly. You're, they're going to start seeking what you're asking for them. And they know just, and you can just get it from a light feel. You don't have to. You don't have to be rude about it and pull on them. And so this will transfer to under saddle, having them this light. When you pick up a, we call it catching, catching them. So all you're doing is just playing with the, the rope right there is catching him. And you see where the snap had to lift when that snap lift right there, see it caught him. It caught his, I don't know if it's his attention or that's where his level of feel is, is right there. You could, you could work one side and get really spectacular results and be just happy with that and then all of a sudden you forgot about the other side. And then you wonder, well, I, he just keeps spooking at the second barrel or you start naming barrels that they're spooking at. I think people could, ah, uh, let me think of the word, because I know with Luke and Portia, teaching them to find their gears and be confident in themselves with their with their own speed and their own power and adding what you're like when you're asking to give asking them to give to you um you can help them you can support them with that stop you're so piggy <laughs> uh, and luke still needs a lot of that he gets his head comes up and he gets bracy when you start speeding it up when you're asking him to work a bit harder and fa like faster like make it more snappier he gets bracy and so I see that already and there's no way like I won't get on him and take him for a gallop he will blow up or run off or do something you know what you can already see it so you want to help them be able to life up and not be bracy about it and do what you're doing with all that life and energy going but also say Come back down and they can they can make that transition from slow work to fast work and back down without getting bracy when people contact us for training they already they already want that connection with their horse and it's usually that the owners almost too loving to their horse where their boundaries are lacking and so now the horse is the leader of their relationship and it's become uncomfortable on the trail or, you know, there's some issue arise. And so what we do is just show the reestablish that boundary with the horse and help the owner realize that there doesn't have to be dominance or force to be able to have respect with your horse. I think there's a lot more people that want to know a different way of handling their horse or riding them. The ones that want it, you know, they're up early in the morning and late to bed, you know, and craving it when they get up. <laughs>